Hello and welcome to the Change Gang Podcast with me, your host, Laura Ordeal. I'm here to help you hold on to your sanity and your soul as you move through big change. I'm here to guide you from frustration to flow in your life, bridging the practical and the woo just for you. Let's go. All right. Welcome to the Week Change Gang. I have Tracy Chambers back with me today, and I'm so excited. I had a lovely conversation with her already, and we get to chat some more. She's so kind to come back. Welcome back, Tracy. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me again. You bet. So go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and say, tell me, we talked a little bit about in the beginning last time, but I'm going to ask you, go ahead and just tell us real quick what you do and a little bit about yourself. Okay. So um, my name is Tracy Chambers. I live in Australia, just on the East Coast, just south of Sydney. Um, I'm a high priestess doula and spiritual channel and intuitive guide. Um, I channel jewelry designs from spirit and from the higher self of my clients and bring them into the physical world. Um, and I help other women to connect with their own intuition and spiritual gifts and channeling powers. Thank you. That's beautiful. And we talked a lot about the jewelry and I'm so fascinated with the jewelry, but we're going to dive into a few different things. I guess a little jewelry related because I do want to ask you when you and I were in a conversation on your podcast, which was wonderful, you actually mentioned that you do readings with gems and I haven't actually done that. So I really want to hear a little bit about that, how you do it, how you got into it and some of the gems, what you use, how it works. So I'm sure I'm going to have more questions about that, but I'm going to let you explain a little bit about how that works. Yeah. Okay. So the gemstone readings that I do, um, how did that start? That's a good question. I think it started when I was channeling the jewelry designs for people. And sometimes I would just get a, a gemstone come to me for them as well um, without the jewelry. You know, it was just about the gemstone. So it was like I would see a person and I could see the gemstone that would best support them right now. So it just happened, you know, like to me, I guess, <laughs> like I, it just happened. And so I started doing, oh, I did a psychic training course with another Laura in the in the States and she was very encouraging you know like this gemstone reading you should do more of those that 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 sounds amazing it's very different like yeah it's a unique way to work with this in the spiritual world so I started offering gemstone readings so I would tune in to your energy and I would just I'll just see a gemstone and once again sometimes I have to research it go through my book and find what it is because I don't always know the name of it because I'm still learning about gemstones and there's so many gemstones um and then I will I have a great kind of textbook about gemstones and properties of gemstones so I use that as a bit of a guide and just let whatever other intuitive messages and information um that comes through while I'm working with you know each client and just share that as well. So when you do it, it's it is it's not necessarily that you have gemstones gemstones in front of you. It's it's more of a what gemstone comes to you in that intuitive moment. So yes. if you and I were sitting down to have a, a reading or a talk, tell me a little bit about how that would go. Yeah, so I would just tune in to you, and I would just allow this a gemstone to come to me, you know, I'm kind of doing it with the intention that a gemstone is going to come to me that is best going to support your your higher self, best support you right now with whatever's going on in your life. And so I'll see a vision of a gemstone or crystal like in my mind. And then I'll also get, you know, intuitive guidance as well that comes through with it. And I'll read out the gemstone to you, find it in my little book <laughs> if I don't know what it is. Um, and then yeah, just share those kind of properties that can support you, why they can support you kind of, yeah, just share the intuitive guidance that comes with it and encourage you to go out and find that gemstone or crystal, you know, to have it. Usually I also get the the information of how you can use it. Like sometimes it might be have a bath with it. Sometimes it might be have it in your pocket all day, all the time, or have it on your desk where you work, or, you know, I get the guidance of how best to use it as well. So do you kind of now have the 
a little bit of your your intuitive language now that's with you that if you sat down with someone and you said, oh, I have I have an emerald, you know, that's coming up for you, you're going to know now here's here's what the emerald means and here's how I see it playing out in your life and here's how to work with that energy right now. Is that how that would flow a little bit? Yes, yes, that's how it flow. I still use my textbook for guidance though because I don't remember every gemstone's properties. But, you know, it's generally whatever comes through is what's in the book anyway. Like, it's funny that I'll just say all this information and I'll read the same thing in the book. So I guess I'm getting better at, at, at kind of, of of doing it, I suppose, um, or more confident with saying what's coming through. I think sometimes that's more of the trick, isn't it? So, yeah, I think that answered your question. Well, and I think different properties or, or different, you know, the emerald might be this, it might be this, it might be this. And and it's not going to be the same property with me that it would be with someone else. So you might, just like cards, just like any intuitive reading, I would think, yes. you, you're going to pull out the specific one that applies for that person. So even though it might have three or four or 10 different properties, you're going yes. to know which one you're pulling in to give to that person, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And I do um, free live gemstone readings in my free Facebook group. And I do actually have an episode of that on my podcast that you can listen to as well. Um, and that's what I find that as, as you were saying that I was thinking of the episode where sometimes I get the same gemstone from more than one client on the call. But the, I guess the, the emphasis is on, yeah, different, different parts, different properties for each gemstone for each client. Well, and that's really where your intuitive process, your intuitive, your intuition comes into play because you know what it is that you're being given to give to that person. So even though it is an emerald, you're not just going to say the exact same, although it could be the same thing for two people. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Because they both might need to hear the same thing. That happens all the time. But it could be that you're pulling out one thing for one person. And you're like, oh, you're getting an emerald too, but here's the part that applies for you. And instead of having it on your desk, you need to be wearing it. Yes. And, yes. and so that, that's how it comes to a little bit different. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to have to go listen to the podcast where you had the, you have to tell me in a little bit which one that is. Cause I'm going to go listen to, I'm just fascinated right now by the, yeah, by that. yeah. It is I don't think I've ever really known anyone that, that does that even with crystal. I mean, I guess I've seen people who work with crystals a little bit, but not really in terms of doing a reading through it. So I think that's amazing that you do that I think yeah I love it I love it and I love that um there is like you know it's funny because I didn't work with gemstones before I used to just make silver and gold jewelry I I had the intuitive fit to work with gemstones but I was ignoring it and so what I find fascinating is now how I I just know that every there's gemstones and crystals that can support every person so much that they're missing out on, you know? So it's almost like I want to tell people what gemstone or crystal, you know, let me tell you because there's something that could help support you. And it's such a beautiful and natural and beautiful way to, to be supported by gemstones and crystals. Well, yeah, they, I think that they are so powerful. I, and I haven't, I have a few crystals and, and I love gemstones and I, I love those. I love jewelry and things like that because it does make me feel somehow connected and supported, which, which to somebody who wouldn't have put it that way, wouldn't understand that. But that's exactly how I feel with a lot of it is I do feel connected. I do feel supported. I feel like it's giving me the energy to be the best kind of version of myself. And I know that sounds a little crazy to some people out there, but that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, that's how it is. And I've I've been like researching a bit about Atlantis and also I, I had a lifetime in Atlantis as a high priestess. And I get, you know, it's just so such basic information that, you know, crystals and gemstones are just so powerful. Like people can kind of had a gemstone or a crystal to support their whole life. You know, that was like their like their guide or their I don't know, their little best friend. <laughs> right. And I think that that having that is so incredible. And I and now I might have to dive in a little deeper after talking to you, but because I've kind of kept that to the side a little bit with with the, you know, gems and the crystals and things like that. But I think they're beautiful. And I know when I dive into something, I tend to dive a little deep. So I could get a little pricey with me for that one. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I want to tell you about the gemstone or the the gemstone. I don't know if you call this gemstone that I've got with me today. This is a tektite. I don't know if you know about tektites. So Mm. when I was a little girl in the desert, we used to collect these out in the desert. We used to find them. Um, it's, it's a little piece that's come off of a meteorite and it has amazing properties. It's a similar to a moldavite. It has like properties to connect with extraterrestrials oh, and cool. yeah, and so kind of intergalactic properties. So that's another thing that's kind of no coincidence, you know, um, as a child, I was collecting these little treasures out in the desert and, and they've, they've kind of sat in a jar in my parents' kitchen for like, I don't know, 40 years. And, and on a recent trip over here, they brought the jar with me and I started to connect with them. And yeah, and that opened up my intuition and spiritual connection on a whole new level again. Wow. Isn't that incredible? And, and that's exactly at the right time that it was right for you to be able to receive that and, and know that that was a different level for you. That was something important for you. And isn't that incredible how our, our life and our intuition, as we open up those doors, it knows now you're ready for this one. Now you're ready for this one. And those doors keep opening and it just blossoms into this amazing, beautiful universe that we live in. And I think it's so incredible that we can tap into all of that energy in whatever way we choose. And I think that your intuition has really used what you know and what you connect with to work with you. And that's, you know, they say all road, all roads lead to Rome. And that's what I've kind of come to know about the psychic world, about the, however it is that you choose to connect with that something, the universe, I use the word universe, the universe, it's going to lead you down the one that's really going to connect for you. So don't be afraid to try the different things that are there because it might be different than what someone else does, or it might be the same. And when you do connect because someone says, oh yeah, this is the way to go. Maybe it's with Oracle cards, try Oracle cards. These are great. And you work with them and you're like, yeah, these are great. But then you move into something else and you're like, oh, this is even more and this is great. You're still moving to where you're supposed to be going and connecting with that energy that you're meant to connect with. Don't you think? Yes, absolutely. Yes. And it just gets like, it's a constant journey. Like I'm still developing and learning and growing and moving into new spaces. And, and it all is, I think one of the great things is it's kind of familiar, you know, like as you opening up your intuition more and more you realize how much of it you already had and and how kind of familiar it is and so once you started working in that what made you or what what came to happen for you that said hey it's time to do this for other people Tracy it's time to help these other people tap into this as well how did that happen for you oh yeah that's a good question um I was just getting the intuitive messages that I need to help other people open up their intuition and I had so many life-changing levels of change (laughs) I don't know if I repeated myself um during my healing work and spiritual awakening that I wanted that for everybody I just want that for everybody I want everybody to be able to feel that life is so easy when you work with your intuition that that it doesn't have to be hard that decisions are so easy like it's like having your best, you know, like a, a coach or a guide just with you all the time, like holding your hand. You don't, it's not hard anymore. <laughs> and so I wanted, I guess I had this feeling that I wanted that for everybody. And I'd been, I've been through like a big relationship kind of end ending where I separated from my children's dad and, and it was really hard for a long time and hard for my children. And during after this you know or during this or part of this whole awakening and and healing process has changed everything for us you know it's it's just yeah it's been quite magical and so I want that for every woman and that's why um I am really passionate about sharing my or helping other women to kind of open their intuition and that's why I wrote the book the magic of intuition because I wanted there to be an easy way for people to access this kind of idea without having to do a you know, and invest money. If they don't have the money to invest, they can, they could just buy my book. And the book is kind of really gives you basic steps of how you can start to connect with your intuition, things you can do. It's got a little bit about my story. And it's also, I also share some interviews with other 
guest experts, psychics and intuitives who who give their kind of knowledge and wisdom of how, you know, little tricks and tips. Um, because I think the more we talk, and that's another reason I started the podcast, is because the more I found that interviewing those women, there are so many different kind of versions of how you can connect with your intuition and so many different little tips and tricks. And and for somebody who's just following, you know, one way and they can't get it, I, I want them to be able to be inspired that there could be another way. So so listen to, you know, listen to how this person connects with their intuition and something might click that will change everything for you. That will that will finally be that that piece that, you know, clicks. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever think you would write a book? No, I didn't. I didn't think I would write a book. No, it hadn't ever crossed my mind to write a book. But actually, I have the year before I wrote a book as I, I was a co-author of a collaborative book. So I wrote a chapter the year before um, as part of my healing journey. And it's called When Women Heal. Um, and it was through that mentor that I worked with, with my six month program. So I'd already done I'd already worked through a lot of the resistance and things that come up when you write, you know, when you get published, your story gets published. So so writing the book on my own was a little bit easier, but still, you know, it still can come lots of scary things things can come up when you're writing your own book and and publishing and putting it out there but overall I just wanted to share my message and and I was guided to write it you know I was guided to write a book and share your message with as many people as possible and a lot of the content is just channeled as well so that's the fun thing about writing a book when you're when you channel you you don't know it's not actually hard work it's just writing down what comes through and just putting the information out there and going for it and again, trust that trust of knowing that what you're, what you are putting out there, what you are doing is what is meant to be out there. And I think that's so important. So did you choose to work mainly with women just because that's how you feel connected to do it? Uh, do you work with men at all or do you just try to keep it to women? Um, I actually prefer to work with women. I feel like I'm, it's something, there's something about empowering helping other women feel empowered that that I really want to help with you know I when I was a little girl my dad told me I couldn't do something because I was a girl and that you know that challenged me for the rest of my life (laughs) Um, you bet you bet so I feel like I'm a big advocate for you know helping other women feel empowered and things like that but I do have male clients who jewelry clients but but I don't work so much with jewelry. I mean, sorry, with men and intuition. I, I intuition. prefer to work with women. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. That is amazing. I think that all of that is so incredible. I love working with color. And so the whole concept of the gem thing really triggers some things for me to be like, oh, that would be super fun. And what would that mean? It's just another path. Like we talked about that. I know now that something, because you introduced it to me, that the next time I look at a crystal or the next time I look at a gemstone, it's going to mean a little something different to me. And I'm going to be searching. What does that mean? Because the universe, we get signs all the time, whether it comes through an animal, a color, a gemstone, a thought, a download, Whatever it is, we get those signs. And if you take a moment to just go, oh, what, what does that mean? What could that mean? What does that mean to me? And you go amazingly, Google it out there now to see what those things are, what that does mean. I do that a lot of times in my readings. If I'm doing something and a, an animal comes up, because I don't know the animals that well, but I know that if an animal comes up, it's a message for that person. And I'll, I'll say, go, go look what this means as a totem or as a spirit animal and see, because it has a message for you. Yeah. Everything in our life has messages for us. And when we listen, it's incredible. And it does change the energy for us. It does. I have to tell you a fun little quick story. And then I want to, I want like for you to share us. You're termed as a high priestess in, in the work that you do. And I, I actually had someone at one point I was asked to do a marriage. My sister asked me to perform a marriage for her uh, with her husband. And I had, I signed up online, you know, like you do these days and, and okay, I can now marry someone. And I did this, but when you turn the paperwork and you have to like choose your name, reverend or father, or, you know, you have to sign it somehow when you do the documentation. And I, I'm, I'm not, 
I'm not a reverend. And I chose high priestess. And so I signed my paperwork, HP, Laura Ordeal, high priestess, Laura Ordeal. So it's, a little, it's a little fun thing. In my family, they, I'm the high priestess now. So oh, that's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Well, I was just told I was the high priestess jeweler. Like that all came through as well when I was working with, yeah, just channeling pieces. I'm like, really? The high priestess jeweler? Can I say that? Like, just say it. That's you. You do it. <laughs> There you I go. had to not there think you... about it too much, you know, not let my ego get involved. <laughs> well, isn't it just a beautiful thing, though, to be a high priestess? I mean, you think about like the high priestess and the tarot and the, they're very knowledgeable and they're just at a level of connection. And I think that's an important part of of that is being connected and allowing that connection. Through that comes the wisdom, you know, eventually in life of what we can teach others, what we can show others. So I'd like for you to tell us, first of all, can you get the book on Amazon? Yes, it's on Amazon, The The Magic of Intuition. By Tracy Chambers? Yes, by Tracy Chambers. On Amazon. And then you mentioned you have a free Facebook group so they can find you at Tracy Chambers, T-R-A-C-I Chambers on Facebook. What is the name of your group? My group's called The Mystic Woman. I love that. Yeah, love that. that's a good one too. That got channeled as well. So the Mystic Woman. Yeah, I'd love you to join that and come and have a I haven't done a free gemstone reading for a while, so there's probably one coming up soon. I'm gonna have to jump in now because I want to do the I want the gemstone reading. And then you have the the podcast. Tell us about that. Okay, the podcast is called The Magic of Intuition, and I interview other um intuitives like yourself, um, and talk about how their journey, you know, how they discover their intuition and how they work with it. I really just want it to be really informative for my listeners so they can get something out of it, you know, something meaty to take away, a a tip or a trick or something to do. And then I also have started doing interviews with my clients about their crowns because that's just so exciting to share. And also I've shared some live gemstone readings on there as well. And I'm, I'm being guided as well to do more kind of channeled messages on there as well. Wonderful. Yeah, it was yeah. super fun. I have listened to uh, episodes of, of your podcast and it is informative because I think we all somehow think, oh, you're an intuitive or you're a psychic or you're this. So this is how you do it. And then, like I said, they think they have to go in and do it that way, but everyone does it a little bit differently. And however it works is awesome. Because some people really need to get into a meditative state or need to have the quiet time or need to do a daily practice to really push into their intuition. Some people, it's a quick thing. They just, it's a little daily process that they do. They just use it. They know it. They go with it. Some people, it's different for everyone. Some people need to sit down and have the cards to be able to tap into it, which is absolutely okay. Don't ever let anyone... I'm going to say this to everyone out there. Don't ever let anyone tell you that how you access your intuition or how you do it is wrong or not right, or you don't need it, or you don't do that. I had people do that at some point in in my journey. Oh, you don't really need that, or you don't need to do this. Maybe I don't, but I enjoy it, and I like how I work with it. And so if that's what I do, that's important. Just like you work with your jewelry, you work with your downloads, you work with those things, and it works, and it feels good for you. So if that's what's working for you, do that. I just have to say that to everybody and anybody that's listening. Do that. Was there anything that you would like to share with anyone? Any wonderful words of wisdom? Oh, gosh, any wonderful words of wisdom? Well, I um, I something that just popped, popped up when you were talking before about looking for the signs. Um, the signs can also be in conversation, like what just happened with us. So if you have a conversation and, and something kind of like dings for you, you know, ding, ding, and you and you think, oh, what what was that about? Like, it's really nice to do a reflection and dig into it a little bit deeper. Like, what, what would that mean for me if I did that? Or why did that resonate so deeply with me? Let, let me do a little bit of exploring and dig a little bit deeper into why. Because I think we meet people and talk with people because they've got something to share that we need to know or learn, um, which is why I'm here today and you're here today, like we're together. Um, so even listening to this podcast, you know, whatever it is that's happened, um, that's dinged for you <laughs> during these conversations, like delve a little bit deeper into them and, and yeah, go with that. See see what, what message or what, what you're meant to learn from it. 
Absolutely. I think that's great. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. They can find you on Facebook, on the podcast, the book, anything else you want to share with us where they can find you? Um, no, that's all. That's all. Facebook is the best place. And yeah, feel free to message me if you want to chat. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. This has been such a fun chat with you. I so appreciate that you spent the time to do this with me. I'm very grateful. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm going to be like buzzing for the rest of the day because I just love talking about intuition and everything. <laughs> That's so exciting. And I mean, actually, I could have gone into like 10 different areas that you brought up and that it's like, oh, I would love to chat about that. And I would love to chat about that. All the different things that are there. And I think that that is so important. And that's part of the reason you do your podcast is to open up that dialogue even more. And I love it too. I love talking about the woo. I, I love talking about the practical. I had some practical guests on recently about how to do this and what to do. And I love talking about the woo stuff too. But also I think that we can use this in our daily lives. And for me, that does make it practical. It does. And it helps us on our journey. Okay, my friends, there we go. I hope that you enjoyed this. And of course, you'll have information in the show notes on how to find Tracy and where to find her and how to get her book and all those amazing things. And go have a look at her jewelry too, because it's absolutely beautiful. Off we go into the week and I will meet you right here next week. Have a great one. I hope today's episode was interesting to you in some way and fun. If so, Hey, find someone to share it with. Maybe they need to hear it too. Or maybe they'll just enjoy it. If you'd like, go ahead and grab my tips on supercharging your success. It includes a free short meditation to do just that. You can find that at bit.ly slash supercharge your success. Until next time, 